Hey friends, Ash here with Gin Sense. Today I'm coming at you guys with four different fragrances to double up on. So these are four different fragrances that I think are worth having a backup bottle for. This is a tag video. I forget off the top of my head who it was that tagged me because I have like 10 different tag videos at this point that I need to do. Uh, if I can remember who that was, I'll put it in the description and I apologize for not knowing off the top of my head when I sat down to film this. And also, I'm gonna go ahead and just tag people right here, right at the beginning. I'm gonna tag Manny from Cascade Scents because it's been four months since he's done a video. So you're tagged, do this video. And I'm also gonna tag Timmy from Imagine Scent. So Cascade Scents, Timmy from Imagine Scent, both tagged. Now with this video, I could have gone a couple different ways. I could have just said, hey, these are four fragrances that I love. Doesn't matter whether they're discontinued or still readily available. These are just four that I love. Or I could have gone with, these are four fragrances that right now I'm wearing a lot. And then you'd end up seeing a lot of fragrances that I've talked about here recently. And I didn't want to do either one of those. So I guess let's run the really short little intro thing and then get deeper into this. So like I was saying guys, there are a lot of fragrances I could have picked for this video that would have made sense, but then you would just see me talking about stuff that I've talked about 10,000 times already. And some of the fragrances that I did end up picking for this video I have talked about before, but just not as often. What I mean is I could have said Green Irish Tweed or Gucci Envy, or Pulse of the Night, or Creed Aventus, or Code Absolute, or uh, Pure Havan, or something like that. You know, fragrances I've mentioned over and over and over and over and over again, and then that would just get kind of redundant, and I didn't want to do that. So, I mean, realistically, if I had to sit down, yeah, Green Irish Tweed would be one of the fragrances that I would say, most likely, because I always want to have a bottle of it, or Tom Ford Oud Wood, or something like that, but that's not too interesting. So, even though I'm not mentioning those fragrances, what I'm trying to say is yes I still love those fragrances it's just how many times can you mention the same ones every single video you know got to switch it up sometimes all right let's go ahead and get into the official list enough of all those qualifiers and all that stuff first one I want to talk about is a fragrance that I have mentioned on this channel multiple times it's the one I've talked about the most out of all the fragrances that I'm going to mention here today and it's this one Lome Ideal Cologne Standard. by Guerlain. So this fragrance is officially discontinued, but you can still pick it up at discounters for a cheap price. This one basically was replaced by Guerlain Lome Ideal Cool, which features mint as one of the main notes. Though in my personal opinion, my personal taste, I like cologne more. I've smelled cologne and cool side by side, and I feel like cologne overall is just a better fragrance. So for me, Cologne was replaced by a fragrance that while it's quite similar, is actually a little bit worse. This one has almond as one of the main notes in the fragrance, which is really the mainstay in this line. Each one of the Lome Ideal fragrances features almond, so that's gonna be the common thread between all the fragrances. This one also has grapefruit and orange and bergamot, so it's got this really nice citrus combination in here, as well as a bit of vetiver as it dries down. So this one essentially is gonna give you a creamy citrus feeling to it, creamy, sweet citrus. This is definitely on the sweeter side of things as far as your spring and summer daytime fresh refreshing fragrances go. It has, as I said, vetiver in the base of the fragrance, so you're gonna get this nice, clean, woodsy sort of dry down. And there's a bit of neroli in here as well. So it's gonna give you a little bit of white floral uh, citrus vibes. So this one for me is going to be one worth doubling up on for a number of reasons. The quality is very high. It's a Guerlain fragrance through and through. Very unique, as I mentioned, uh, especially when compared to your typical fresh summertime type fragrance. The price is low and the discontinuation. So this one may end up being very difficult to find in the future. It wouldn't surprise me if in the future this fragrance goes way up in value. I've seen it happen with countless fragrances, even ones that were much less popular than this one. Once the stock of a fragrance runs dry at discounters and the fragrance is no longer being produced, the price typically will go up and up and up as there is no longer a supply 
to meet the demand. Like I mentioned before, I've talked about this fragrance a lot. It's made multiple spring lists on my channel. I love this fragrance. I think it smells awesome. First time I smelled it, fell in love with it. And that one is one that I would definitely double up on. And it's actually one I already have doubled up on. This is my uh, second bottle. I've got another one that's about yay full. So this one I already have doubled up on, but it's one I would suggest to others doubling up on as well. Next up is a fragrance from Paco Rabanne. This one has grown on me more and more and more over the years. One that I love in cooler weather, colder weather, so you probably already know what it is. One million Preve. For Standard. me, if you ask me, what is my favorite fragrance in the One Million line? This one, One Million Preve. It's my favorite. I know One Million Lucky probably has a little more favor with people right now, or it's a newer release, big compliment puller, uh, but One Million Preve for me, my favorite. It is a tobacco fragrance. It's got cinnamon in there, as tonka, orange, myrrh, patchouli. It smells fantastic. It is very sweet, which you would kind of expect in the One Million line, especially for a fall and wintertime fragrance in the One Million line, so I don't dock at any points for that. I actually like it. It's a sexy fragrance, compliment pulling. My wife loves it. Uh, as I said, great during fall and wintertime, daytime or nighttime fragrance for me. I've worn this to the office a bunch, worn it casually a bunch as well, and also a good date night fragrance. There are a lot of uses for that scent, and for me, even though it does have this youthful edge that the original One Million has, it has a little more versatility than the original One Million. It it does have that sweetness, kind of an overload of sweetness, just like the original One Million does, but that one I feel like I can pull off in more situations, and if I really wanted to stretch it, I could wear it formally. Though, uh, definitely not what comes to mind first when I think of formal fragrances, I'll tell you that much. So when I was thinking about this list and I was looking through different fragrances, thinking, uh, would I care if I ran out of that one? Maybe not, maybe not that one either, maybe not that one. And I saw this one and I thought, that's actually one that I really would like to keep. You know, if this was running low, I would definitely get a backup bottle. I would replace this one. So, One Million Preve. Now let's go from One Million Preve to a fragrance that is almost a polar opposite of One Million Preve. This one, definitely not as uh, youthful and sweet, but an amazing fragrance. It is Timbuktu Standard. by L'Artisan Parfumé. And I actually have two bottles of this one. This is my backup bottle. So this one is another one just like L'Homme Ideal Cologne that I technically already have two bottles of. It's got vetiver, incense, papyrus, mango, and myrrh. And this is one of the better incense vetiver fragrances that you're ever gonna smell. It really is. It's perfumed by Bertrand Duchefort. And this one is just a stunner. Awesome smelling fragrance. Yeah, it just smells so rich and uh, a little bit rooty, a little bit dark at times, but not too dark. Grassy, woody with resins, a little touch of sweetness in there from the mango. This one is an A plus fragrance for me personally. Performance on this is good, and really this house in general is one that gets overlooked. There are a lot of fragrances that this house has done that are just really, really, really nice that don't get talked about much at all, really. And also, depending on when you catch it, sometimes you can find L'Artisan uh, Parfumé fragrances for very cheap at discounters. There have been times that I've seen fragrances from this house going for 40, 50 bucks for a 100 milliliter size bottle. Sometimes it is a tester, but at that price, nine times out of 10 with this house, gonna hit it out of the park for that price. As of this video, Timbuktu is not really going for cheap that I could see on the discounters that I typically use. I have seen this fragrance before going for like 50 bucks. And if you ever see Timbuktu going for 50 bucks at a discounter, my suggestion is scoop it up. If you don't own it, scoop it up. And if you need a backup bottle, also scoop it up. Right now, I think, again, as of this video, obviously if you're watching this in the future, it could change, it will change. Uh, it's like $80 for a 50 ml bottle, which is not an amazing deal. Uh, I got this one, a backup bottle for much less, so I don't necessarily think that you should splurge on it um, unless you just really want it and then go for it. This one for me, gonna be more of a cool weather fragrance, daytime or nighttime, casual or formal, and I do wear this to the office as well. I haven't talked about this much on the channel, 
but understand Timbuktu is awesome. Fantastic fragrance. And for that matter, Bertrand du Chauffeur did a lot of fragrances for L'Artisan uh, Parfumé, which are just amazing. So you can go to Fragrantica and look up Bertrand du Chauffeur and scroll down through all the different scents that he's done for, for this house. There are some stunners on there. I actually own about 12 or 13 fragrances from this house. And as I said, I haven't really mentioned them all that much and I may need to change that here in the near future. So Timbuktu, one of the fragrances that I would definitely have a backup bottle for, one I would double up on, and I uh, actually have already doubled up on it, so yeah. Last up, fragrance from the house of Memo Paris. And I've mentioned this fragrance a few times, but not too terribly many times. It is African leather. Stand. And I know that my friend Eugene at You Smells Good hates this fragrance, but I love it. I always have, first time I smelled it, fell in love with it, and I've never fallen out of love. This one, of all the fragrances that I've mentioned, easily going to be the most expensive, even at discounters, this runs quite a bit more than Timbuktu. Cardamom, leather, saffron, uh, cumin, and vetiver, some of the notes in this fragrance. And this one does have a definite sort of designerish edge to the scent, in the sense that it's cardamom forward, it's not really heavy leather, not really an animalic leather. The fragrance is trying to be as wearable as possible. This is not one of those niche fragrances that's trying to be extremely artistic or anything like that. It's not trying to necessarily push the envelope, you know, and, and do something groundbreaking. But what it does, which is a sexy, spicy, sweet blend on top of an extremely wearable leather, it does so well to me. This is extremely wearable. It's a fragrance that when I smell it, I just think, God, that smells great. It's just, it is what it is. It's, it's a fragrance made to be worn, to pull compliments. It's not trying to do anything crazy. It's just trying to smell good and sweet. And that's what it does. When you see the name African leather, you see the big cat on the front of the bottle, you probably think of the Sahara, you know, sun scorched earth, deserts, things like that. Uh, you may think of intensely hot uh, spices popping out of this or very animalic leather, like a, a dirty, almost like animal hide, uh, like a rhino's hide or something like that. If you're really stretching your imagination, uh, but then you spray it on and it's, yeah mainly just sweet, sexy date night <laughs> kind of the thing going on here. But I love it. Yeah, let's spray the air here. <laughs> yeah, awesome. This one is one that I would love to double up on. Like I said, it is expensive. I'm not really running low on the fragrance or anything like that, but if somebody came and offered me a bottle of this, I'd absolutely take it. I think it smells awesome. And African leather kind of led me into the entire uh, Queers Nomads line that Memo has. So I've started collecting them just because of this one. So there's Italian leather, French leather, Moroccan leather, Irish leather, Russian leather, on and on. And I own most all of them. And that's all because of this one. So while some of you out there, Eugene, don't like this one and find it boring, for me, what it does, it does well and I love to smell it. It's a fragrance that I love to wear just for myself, spray it on and throughout the day I'll be like, mm, I smell good. So there we go, four different fragrances to double up on. Guerlain, Lome, Ideal, Cologne, One Million, Privé, Timbuktu, African Leather. Like I said, there are countless fragrances that I could go through here and say, oh yeah, double up on that one and that one and that one and that one and that one. I mean, you can go through my lists and see a lot of those, but I didn't want to just feature the same stuff that I would typically feature. So I tried to switch it up slightly and feature some fragrances that I absolutely adore wearing for myself that maybe don't make it onto the channel quite as much for one reason or another. All right, guys, it's gonna do it for me. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Stay safe out there. See you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.